Okay, I'm going to read today from the book of Lamentations. Uh, This is right after Jeremiah. In fact, this was written by the prophet Jeremiah. He was a very, he was known as the weeping prophet because of his, uh, because of his sorrow for the children of Israel and what God was, how God was punishing them for their disobedience. But in Lamentations chapter 3, and beginning with verse 22, he says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is Thy faithfulness. So I think that is so beautiful that he said, because the Lord's compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Now to God, there really is not a morning. There's really not a day or night. God is the same all the time. So in other words, God's mercies are continually new. And great is thy faithfulness, he said. Now, the first phrase, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. I'm going to spend a few minutes here talking about the depravity of man and how bad we are as human beings, okay? So I've got got to talk about that a little bit before we talk about the goodness of God. So as we know, probably most of us, because of Adam and Eve's transgression. In the beginning, God created man perfect. They would have lived forever, in fact. God created man to have an eternal body. But God told Eve, and and so in fact, God only gave them one uh, requirement, only one thing. They could do anything they wanted to do. They could eat anything they wanted to eat. But he gave them one thing that they could not do. And you might say, why do you think he did that? Well, if he hadn't have done that, they would have been like robots. They wouldn't have had a choice. And God wanted people to serve him, and he still does today. God wants people to serve him because they choose to serve him, because they choose to love him. And and so God gave them that one thing requirement you cannot eat of this one tree of the tree of knowledge of good and evil well of course we we know the story she did because the devil came along and the serpent and he tempted her and he said if you eat this tree you'll become like god you'll know good and evil and so she she ate it and because of that then man was from that day till this day Every human being that's ever been born into this world has been born with a sin nature, except Jesus Christ. When Jesus was born into the world, He was perfect. He did not have that sin nature. He was the Son of God. But other than that, every human being that's born into the world has a sinful nature. We are prone to sin. We, are, we have a propensity to sin. We have a tendency to sin as human beings. And that's why we need a Savior. And that's why Jesus came. And and so when he said here, uh, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, that's because we all deserve to be consumed. Really, we do. Uh, uh, Because we all sinned against a holy, just God. And the only punishment, really, that could be given for something that dreadful to sin against a holy, just God who created us would be an eternal punishment. But thank God for Jesus Christ. He saw, God saw our need. In fact, one of the most famous verses in the Bible, John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, God saw mankind that they were hopelessly lost. 
They were eternally lost. They were on their way to a hell, to eternal hell, because that's what we deserved. He said, it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed, because we deserve to be consumed. But Jesus said, Jesus came and said, I'll pay that price for you. See, there had to be, from the beginning of time, uh, God, there was, in fact, I talked about Eve's sin a few minutes ago. <coughs> What did God do when Adam and Eve found out they, they realized when their eyes were open they were naked? What did God do? God killed an animal. He took the skin from that animal, the skins from those animals, and He made them clothes. What did that, what did that typify? That was pointing forward to Jesus Christ and His shed blood. That Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sins, Paul tells us in the book of Hebrews. So... Uh, that was a sign, you might say, when God killed those animals, made those clothes for Adam and Eve, that was pointing forward to Jesus Christ. And so that He would ultimately come and pay that sacrifice for our sins that we could be forgiven. Because, folks, without Jesus Christ, we'd all be on our way to hell. Because there is no other way. They're, they're, the, the Muslims say there's a way and the Hindus say there's a way and someone else says there's a way and someone else says there's a way. But Jesus says, I am the way. The truth and the life. He says, no man comes to the Father but by me. And it doesn't matter what any man says other than that. You may be a wonderful person. You may be a good person. You may do good your whole life, but if you have not surrendered your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, you will end up in the wrong place. Because there's only one way to eternal life, and that is through Jesus Christ. But oh, I'm so glad that Jesus paid that price for me because I couldn't pay it. And I couldn't pay it, and neither could you. And it wouldn't matter if we were loaded with money. We couldn't pay. That's right. We couldn't buy our way into heaven. We can't buy God's love. You can't buy love. Well, in this world, you maybe can buy a little bit of love, like a sugar daddy for an example. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. You can't buy love. You can't buy God's love. It's only given. It's a gift. The Apostle Paul talks about, he said for uh, the, our salvation, that it is a gift of God. The grace of God that bringeth salvation, he, he told Titus, hath appeared to all men. To all men. And so by grace are you saved through faith, he said, that not of yourselves, but it is the gift of God. Yeah. So here we are. We're, un, we're all undeserving. We're all we all deserve hell. We all deserve to be lost because we all sinned against the Holy God. But God paid the price through His Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us. And now we can live when we have met Jesus Christ and have surrendered our lives to Him and had our sins forgiven. We can live a victorious, a holy, a blessed life through Jesus Christ. What a blessing! What an what a honor. What, just think about how great that is that God takes just average little human beings like us. And I don't know about you, but I feel pretty small most days. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to throw this in here though right about now. It is human nature to be prideful. That's part of human nature. Uh, that's part of, in fact, that's what got Satan thrown out of heaven. As he began to look around, he saw how great God was, and he says, I want to be like God. And he got, of course, dethroned and kicked out of heaven, and now he's causing all kinds of, of havoc down here. Uh, but it was pride. And I believe that almost every human being has a tendency to have pride. And I will, you know what? God hates pride. It's one of the things that God cannot stand. And you know, I've thought about that quite a bit. And I, I, I guess that one of the reasons God hates pride so much is because He knows how nothing we are. He knows we're just dust. He knows, He remembers that He took dust of the earth 
And He created a man and He breathed in man the breath of life. He made man a living soul. He made us what we are. Who are we to begin to think that we are anything higher than dust? And I want to tell you today that if you have any talent, and if I have any talent of any kind, it came from God. I didn't give it to myself. You didn't give it to yourself. And I do believe, folks, that we're all, God has given every single one of us at least one talent. Yes. At least. Yes. Some of us, some people have more. I don't know if I, how many talents I have, but I know I have at least one, whatever that is. I have a talent. Because God gives everybody at least one talent. But it is so important for us to recognize it is God-given. Yes. And without God's blessing on what we do, it's nothing. So whatever it is we do, we need God's blessing on it. If if you're going to witness to somebody who's not a Christian, you need God's blessing. Uh, If you're just for your light to shine every day as a child of God, you need God's blessing. Uh, just, Just to exist every day, As a child of God, you need God's blessing. And thank God that He gives that to those who who trust Him, to those who pray, to those who look to Him. So, So He said, It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because we all deserve to be consumed. But, I'm glad it didn't stop there. He says, Because His compassions fail not. You know, most some of us in here are parents, quite a few of us. And as a parent, I want you to think for a moment about your children and what you would do for your children. Really, is there anything you wouldn't do for your children? I mean, you know, short of, you know, something that's bad for them. Why? Because you love them. And it doesn't matter how many times your child might mess up. They're still your child. You still love them, right? Yes. You still have compassion. You still feel sorry for them. If, if in fact, I was thinking about this this week. If, if your child has a problem, any one of your children has a problem, and, and they're having a hard time with something, you help carry the load because you can't help it. Yes. It is a load. It's a burden on you because they're your child. And they're part of you. And so it's a burden for you when they have a problem. Well, how much bigger? Think about God for a second. We're His children. When we have a burden, when we have a problem, when God sees us struggling with anything, think about how He must feel. Because His compassions fail not. In fact, the Bible tells us in Psalms 103, I believe it is, it says, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear Him, for He knoweth their frame, He remembereth that they're just dust. He remembers when He sees us struggling down here. He has pity on us because He remembers we're dust. (laughs) We're just dust. But He remembers that and He has compassion on us. So thankful for that. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. I'm going to wrap up with this phrase here. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is the faithfulness of God. I would not be here today if God's faithfulness wasn't great. And probably neither would you. It's because in spite of our mess-ups, in spite of the fact that we're dust, in spite of the fact that we're human, His faithfulness is great. Great. Great is thy faithfulness. I uh, found myself singing this song one day this week, and, and, and that's not unusual for me. I just sing songs. Songs just come in my head and I start singing. 
But this song actually, as I as this song came into my mind, I started singing. It actually made me stop and think for a second as I thought about the words of that song. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not, as thou hast been, shalt thou ever be. And I thought about the, one of the other verses that says, Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth, thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. And I, I was just thinking about the faithfulness of God in my own life. And how great it has been. And I'm so thankful for that. So today I just want to encourage all of us. That no matter what may be going on in our life. No matter what troubles we may be having. No matter how we might have messed up. Remember today that great is the faithfulness of God. Great is the faithfulness of God. He will forgive. He will have mercy. He will have part. He will. Because that's our God. He's great. And He's merciful and He's faithful. So I'm going to close with that. In fact, we're going to sing a song. Number uh, 33, Deborah.